face and start kicking ass, just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour, tower of power, too sweet to sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. Nightmares on the best part of my day. The goods from the wood. Hot damn. Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley. I'm Pat Riley. Let's look at that minute of the hour. Tow, power to sweet and sour. And today we are joined by uh, the San Francisco Bay's finest, ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Kevin Hart. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Philly. Oh, Kevin, I thought you were shorter, dude. <laughs> He's from Philly. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't see that on, on the thing, so just go with it. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? Say your name, buddy. Kasim Bentley. Kasim Bentley is here. I like to have people say their name because it's the thing you do in radio. So people know what they're listening to. So, when, <laughs> so they can project. As if they're confused after 198 episodes as to who's talking. In this. Uh, but yeah, yeah, man, it's uh, it's great to have uh, it's, great to have you it's here. It's a long time, brother. Trying yeah, to make this happen. Long time coming, but we are finally, finally here. So uh, besides being one of the funniest comedians uh, in, in Los Angeles, the one thing... Uh, that's no. already a lie. It's huh? already, we're already, it's, <laughs> well, you you moved to LA recently, right? I moved last year. Okay, yeah. I moved yeah. from San Francisco down to Los Angeles for a writing job, and then changed my career. And now, uh, a year and five months later, six months later, I'm in this chair. Okay, all so, right. And it all led to this point. I started from so, the bottom, <laughs> and I'm moderately, moderately outside of the bottom. Well, can I you know? say this too? You've always got really good shirts. Because yeah. I, last time I saw you, you had that camouflage one that was really good. Yeah. And now you got the Jim Croce one, which is also really good. I didn't, all I heard was Jim Crow. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I heard right there. Jim Croce. Go yeah. Jim Croce. Jim yeah. Croce. Yeah. 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 Way different. Yeah. This is an Itali- a short Italian man from the 70s who died in a plane crash after singing Bad, Bad Leroy Brown. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bad. Remember that song? Yeah. And then uh, what is it? Uh, Operator. Operator. If, you, if you've ever been in a grocery store. You've heard Jim Croce. In America. Jim Really? <laughs> Operator, well, could you help me place this car? Oh, yeah. I know that song. Or uh, the time in a bottle. Or uh, yeah. I know this new song. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. I've been sad. <laughs> Anna Vaughn's that last yeah, yeah. one. That last one. <laughs> and it hit you. It hit me. <laughs> like, for real, bro. Yeah, yeah. Damn. And it was sung by this guy that wore all denim tuxedo yeah. all the time. Yeah, the point is, he was a denim guy. Yeah. Real denim guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could look at him and you'd say, wow, he looks like he came from 1972. Yeah. Because yeah. he wears like the Lamont Sanford special, which is as much <laughs> denim as you can possibly wear at once. This dude is killing you right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that. <laughs> to my Twitter, to my Twitter by uh, my description, the black what's his name? Jim, Jim Croce, Cro- black Jim Croce, the black Jim Croce, yeah. the black Jim Croce. Yeah, see, Jim Croce. See, cause you're a brother, so you can get away <laughs> with wearing this much denim and not draw the Jim Croce comparison. I don't know about that. That we can't do. I feel like country guys could do that in L- Ralph Lauren. They can yeah. get away with wearing like enough well, denim. Like if you could, but if you got, especially if you're a dark uh, uh, hair and things, you get a mustache. So yeah, yeah, yeah you kind of look a little bit like Sonny Bono. You put on that <laughs> denim. You now look like Jim Croce because, because the the all denim is a really tough funny bono. Well, the all denim is a yeah, all denim a is bit. a really tough thing to pull off because you could look cool mm-hmm. like Jim Croce, <laughs> or you could look like Jay Leno. Oh God! And yeah. that's like that's that, the, the, the margin of error is very slim, yeah. but the stakes on either side. Ooh, like if you look like Jim Croce and you wear all that, de- you look badass. But if you look yeah. like you know Jay Leno, it's just like yikes, man. But what if Jay Leno had a mustache? Oh, that's I don't a, th- well, no. Still be- a lot of chin because Jay Leno with a mustache starts to look like Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sergeant Slaughter with hair. That is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is amazing. Because <laughs> I didn't Thank know. I appreciate last it. Last time I came here to, 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 ta- to tape the pilot, yeah. that I just thought there was this dude in your building. Oh yeah, no, no. This is- <laughs> I just thought it was like this guy you friended, and then you were like, "Hey, he just hangs out." Yeah, from time they to don't time. let me in the building too much. Uh- <laughs> He's the guy that hangs out on the couch and eats all of Rivers. His Pringles or something, you know. That's what. No, <laughs> there's something really great about you that you really have good taste, sir. <laughs> because at first, even before I knew, I thought you were just here again. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, oh, he's just 
came downstairs or like I thought maybe then I started I thought about it when he started walking in. I was like, oh maybe he's just like some UCB guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> or something like just an actor or something. But now I know you are just pure comedy. Yeah. Yeah. That's now the, I know. You like, heard it here first, folks. This well, is <laughs> Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. Uh, no, let, let's talk about our very, very perceptive and intelligent <laughs> guest tonight. Dude, you are you are like you are great, bro. Thank you. It's like watching Alan Iverson in his prime, man. <laughs> You. I'm, like I'm, really, I'm good at round like, ball too. Can People do it all that. around. It doesn't stop. You, <laughs> it doesn't stop. It just keep on coming. Like, uh, it, no one's guiding you. Well, I don't know about CSI the CSI is not guiding you. The Midnight Rambler comparisons <laughs> there. But, uh, I appreciate <laughs> your perception, dude. It's like talking to the internet, man. Like, you know what I, mean? <laughs> like, just I think like, that's our new Twitter bio. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really am. I appreciate uh, that you finally somebody recognizes the greatness. <laughs> I'm what mean, I have to say. It's, I if it, I could get you in a room, I really feel that we could sell you on some kind of country music channel, kind of like for you know like some kind of. Do they have a Red Sylvain show. Or they can like they can bring back like Trick My Truck, like just bring back Trick My Truck. <laughs> what is that? It was uh, it was Pimp My Ride, but for guys that were long haul truckers. Yeah. It's a, wow. But so it wasn't. But it was like based. So Trick My Truck was different than Pimp My Ride because Pimp My Ride was like. I'm gonna take your okay. Your car's a piece of shit, yeah. and it's how and you need your piece your your car to get to work, but it's not reliable. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna make it more unreliable. <laughs> like that was the whole conceit of <laughs> pin my ride. We trick my truck. It's like I'm gonna make it green with a giant screen TV. Yeah, I'm gonna put, sure get stolen. I'm gonna put boot, I'm gonna put bootleg uh, like Grim Reaper kit on your like Geo Metro. <laughs> yeah, put fake Louis Vuitton print on it yeah, and then yeah. put in a fish tank like <laughs> that. That was the pin my but trick my truck was like, oh, you're a long haul trucker and your cab is like messed up. We're gonna make it an amazing place to work in so you could do your job better. <laughs> I they should fix them up with one of them nice sleeping compartments for the, the lot lizards, if you know what I mean. Well, not necessarily for the lot lizards, but like, it was all these guys like, yeah, I'm a hard-working dude. I provide for my kids. I live in my truck all the time. It's falling apart. And then they would like fix up. It's like, these guys, like you would just see these giant burly men in shirtless, like sleeveless shirts, just crying because it's like, oh my god, this is like changing my life for the better. As opposed to on pin my ride, it's just like, whoa, well, you I put a bowling alley in my truck. <laughs> yeah, I like that's what I loved about it because they take one, a couple of minute things where it's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I like, uh, I like to ride my car. I work out. You know what I'm saying? I like to keep it fit. And it's like, and Zig was like, yo, we put a Vitamix. You know what I mean? In the <laughs> back. You know what I'm saying? And we put a weights. And then he's just like sitting there. This sounds pretty great. I would rather have a truck F-150 with a printer in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and, the second time today, Rivers Printer has come up. <laughs> well, no, but there was like, yeah, it was just when, when Mad Mike got the idea of what was going on, he'd be like, well, I heard that he really likes volleyball, so we're going to put a full-size regulation volleyball <laughs> net coming out of his trunk. It's like, how's it? It's like, what? it's just, just like, how's it going to fit? He's just like, hydraulics. We're going to require five batteries in the truck <laughs> so I love that the money, he, he, all he really could have needed was just some paint and some wheels. Right. And give him the rest of the money to get maybe a degree online or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> or something that he could get his kids back. But then it gets, it comes this whole like hydraulics. It turns into this like hick transformer in a mobile. Well, no, you know like, I mean? Yeah. And then trick my truck's just like, here's a truck that you can drive across country in and you can be really comfortable. And guess what? We painted it green. Yeah. And they always would. <laughs> oh, so the colors would never be subtle. It'd be like candy apple yeah, green. It'd be or like uh it'd be like crazy kind of colors on the outside, but then very practical shit on the inside. <laughs> so it was really weird. Like, and they would have like the chromed out, like the stacks and everything for the truck. And, yeah. But then the inside it would just be like a nice cab where you could live. <laughs> so. Oh, wait. So eventually the tr outside of truck will get you fired. And you can yeah. lose part of your life. Or get your but, ass pulled over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, Walmart does not like their long haul truckers. Uh, it's tall, oh, these were cars. like these weren't like F one fifty. These were like truck. No, this These was for like... truckers, like like long haul, like people hauling produce across oh, the country yeah, and yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that those guys owned the trucks. A lot of times they do. Yeah. 
They own the um, they own the front part. The back part yeah. is like the back part belongs to Walmart. The front yeah. part is yours. I, th- I think it's yeah. different too, depending on like whether you're independent truck on. Yeah, that. yeah. There's independent. Yeah, well, these would all be independent truckers. So guys so. Work yeah. for companies, I think, and other people might work for themselves. Own their own. Yeah. Oh, now I can see how this show got sold. All right, yeah. I understand it. Like, yeah, well, yeah. The, but, all these truckers, they need something to want. He said it represents. Oh, you them. just thought we were saying they they were just guys who happen to own trucks. trucks. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, like uh, you know, we're gonna make F-150. your shit boring. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, my life is not complete right now. I don't know what it is, and then like that. That okay? Now I get it. Yeah, now I get it. I've That's... never seen the show, so I enjoyed the back and forth of the Ford F one fifties and Rivers talking about the big rigs. Yeah. <laughs> roll on family, roll on crew, roll on mama like I asked you to do. like the hooker's perspective. I would like to pitch a show like Lounge Lizards, but call it Lot Lizards, you know what I mean? And they tell like stories and they reenact them with actors. Like, you know you know what I mean? That'd be pretty great. Like, <laughs> that was the old show on Comedy Central. That showed how old I was, where comedians, like, they would do, they would reenact their bits. Oh, yeah, that, that was around the time of Pulp Comics as well. Yo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, this room turned I remember, I remember <laughs> there was, <laughs> yeah, there was, or even, like, I'd always find it funny, like, Dr. Katz. It would just be, like, somebody else's bit. But it would just have the cool animation on it. Like, Spriggles. Yeah. We're... That show was the shit. <laughs> or like, uh, my favorite was Comics Unleashed, where it would just be like, so I'm going to ask you this question that's very vague. Start into your best material and make it look like it's an organic answer. I always love that. <laughs> but what's the difference between, now here's the thing, people hate on Byron Allen because of that whole format, right? But he's a billionaire, so, you know. He just bought the Weather Channel. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get the black weather. <laughs> Do you not understand? We talk about, oh, did he own Ciroc? He does. It, you know what I'm saying? Like, title is not really all owned by he owns the weather channel. Do you not understand how big of a thing? If you're racist, now you have to hate him for giving you, you the to, weather. You have to hate the weather channel. Yeah. Owning the weather channel is damn almost like owning the weather as it is. Yeah. It's it, true. I mean, what else are people going to watch in the winter? I guess. Because what's the point of the weather channel except to live in some nice place like Augusta, the winter golf capital of the East Coast, and watch all the people in New York and shit <laughs> getting blizzarded? I... <laughs> well, no, Byron Allen owns other stuff like it's like everybody was like oh he owns the the weather channel i think there's like other like properties that he owns that you just sit there and it's just like oh my god this is something that like actually makes money like yeah. try to find it there well, was money and weather it happens every day yeah well- <laughs> <laughs> in la i love that it's like you say what's everyone's thinking. <laughs> That's true, because I just make that much sense, is what it is. <laughs> he bought he bought the Weather Channel for $300 million. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, and he has a bunch of, like, web properties that are, like, low level, but it's, like, the amount of things he actually owns, it's, like, it's pretty diversified, and it's but pretty wide. But he started wide. off as the host of Comics Unleashed, or was he already... But he was, like, an insane, like, he was, like, a, a like, kind of a prodigy st- like stand up mm-hmm. comic, like when he, he was, was like, like a teen prodigy, kind of yeah. like how we saw Eddie Murphy. Okay. Right? But he just went a whole other route. Yeah. yeah. He just got out early. Well, wow. He was smart enough to get out and do something that makes money, like owning the Weather Channel. Yeah, he was on, <laughs> like I flipped through it. He was on like Johnny Carson when he was like 18 or something like that. And was funny. I, I hate the way mothers give you whoopings, right? You know how they give you whoopings? They slap you, right? And in between each slap, they throw on a word. It's like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> Did you hear me? What are you gonna say? No, start over. <laughs> it was like, it was clean funny, but he was funny. But then all these other shows go, and then the idea that him and his mother, his mother, and gets decided to come together and they're saying, like, to start buying late night programming. Yeah. And to, because the revenue, the ad revenue, it's you know, think about that. We that don't time. really think of That's why we get all yeah. this trouble, even when we think about Rosanna and stuff. It's like, it's a big hit for her, but it's also a big hit. And you know, when they hike up these prices, I was reading this book about like how they really, these networks think how ads really run television. Right. It's yeah. like, so he gets really thought about it, and he made program his thing about it. People shit on him for these programs that think it's all hokey, but everyone I know who shits on him watch those shows oh, yeah. religiously. And then he knew people didn't like comics and leash, so he started doing like shows where he focuses on comics, where they did bits and sets. And he's never me too, nobody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The There's yeah. nothing that they asked yeah. him about that. He's never done a damn thing. Here's the best story about him: He'll go to the Playboy Mansion and try to respectfully. <laughs> Get ass. 
<laughs> like I read it as a big article. Like, yeah, I saw Barnell in there. He's asking a woman out on a date. You know what I mean? There's whores here. You know what I mean? Like, what's wrong? Well, isn't that how it always starts anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to Terry? <laughs> That's a that that gives him so many cool points that he goes into the Playboy Mansion and he's like, Hey, there's this great new restaurant that <laughs> opened up over in, you know, over in Studio City. I was wondering, you know, I think we're vibing. Would you like to Go out. <laughs> like, Excuse me, Miss Katane. She's got to go through her phone. Okay, I have a gang bang in the morning. <laughs> and I, I, I can work you in at the gang I bang. To, I'm trying to get my kid back. And maybe, you know, then he leaves in his Bentley and she's like, gets washes a white Bentley, gets weaving. And she's just like, I'm stupid. You know, and then he goes all the way. It's like the best. It's just like, there's so many people. They're getting out there, they're getting now the number of calls, you know what I mean, who've done lascivious shit. Right, right. And he's just out here quietly, quiet money. <laughs> yeah. Like, think weather about the money. That. What? Weather channel money. The weather money. Yeah. Think about that. We all want to own all this oh, other God. bullshit. People watch really, that the thing. the weather. People watch that thing all day. The weather channel has to be, I mean, it may not be yeah. the most ballyhooed thing on TV, but it's probably one of the most watched thing on cable because everybody has weather everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's primo program. If you live in a nice place, it's what you do in the winters. You watch the storms on the Weather Channel and be glad that you ain't there. But I'm going to go really out there and put out a real conspiracy hotep theory. I think the government is trying to stop Byron Allen's rise with the Weather Channel because there was this <laughs> article that came out a few weeks ago talking about how now it's been found out the government has been uh, funding all these weather control machines. Oh, the, the harp uh, uh, stuff. Oh, no, yeah. They, yeah. They can control Think the weather. <laughs> They're trying to control the weather. Do y'all remember that cartoon G.I. Joe? Yes. Yeah. You remember the episode where they had the weather dominator? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> is it like that? I don't think it's as sophisticated. I don't think Trump so it doesn't have all like the, his money. I the think the ion is, correlator and all that stuff like that. <laughs> Whoa. I didn't even know those words about to come out your mouth, bro. You know what I mean? Well, this was from a cartoon, so it's not I know, like it's but still, <laughs> it's it's the beard and the hat. It's just like really, it's it's really crazy, bro. It's like when you it's like when you go on those MRI, MRA, like Reddits, you know what I mean? And you're like, oh, what a bunch of shit. And then one guy's like, oh, that's a salient point he made. You know what I mean? It's like, you're really blowing my mind right now, bro. You said MRI. I thought you meant that thing that's like a cat scan. And it's, like, it's like when you get in a cat scan machine, you see me peeking out the other end. <laughs> that would be so great. The guy that doesn't understand the difference between MRI. MRA and MRI. Like, my dad had an MRI, MRA up in his chest. He almost died last night. I mean, it's like, what is an MRA? Is that that thing that they have in the army now because they don't have C rations no more? <laughs> <laughs> That's an MRE. <laughs> That's a meal ready to I'm eat. I'm just going to start throwing out stuff very soon. Well, yeah. What is an G MRA? Uh, Men's, Rights, Men's Rights Association. You, look, you might look like the guy that invented it. You know what I mean? Like, Could you ever been on those? It's no, I incredible. Don't know what it was until two minutes Dude, ago. Dude, the best part of being on those are the women that want to hook up with MRA guys. Whoa, I got to go to this thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Yo, if you, I'm really, because now I, I don't. So, first off, just, I don't even like, that's a segment of the internet. I just like don't. <laughs> engage oh in. no it's you just like, i just really just hopped on red it just like scares the the hell out of me no you really want to get some pure entertainment and see how the, this country is really going down the tubes is uh in a gets in a covert subversive way but it's really powerful mra like reddit and understanding and also like that and the dark web the dark web i finally got tour i got in it I'm not going to buy any heroin. I'm not going to buy a baby, <laughs> but I definitely, I'm look, I love chatting on there. I love looking on this stuff. I could buy some meth right now. I have it here in 30 minutes. Well, is the dark web that thing where like they did that Batman thing and it was different than Batman used to be because it was more gritty and everything? That was, that's that the was Dark Knight. That was, yeah. What is the dark web? <laughs> that, it, it's from like Darkwing Duck, I think. <laughs> So let's get dangerous. <laughs> is this the internet for like the Saint Canard area? I love, area? I love that's, the that's, the name, that's the name of his lair, the dark, the, the, the dark, dark web. web. Yeah, dark that web. is that, that is Batman's actual internet when he's on there. You know, I love the dark web. <laughs> so what actually is it though? Somewhere you go online to buy crack and shit. <laughs> it's on. It's an online world that cannot be penetrated by the government, or if it is, or by factions of the government. And you can. It's it's like it's its own dark marketplace. You know, what I mean, it's where the underworld lives. 
It's like yeah. the black market of the internet. Yes. Right. So you can like it's incredible. take out hits on people and buy drugs and you know. Okay. Just, okay. Have you taken like out any hits from us? Bought any drugs? No, no. How about you? I <laughs> we got on it at Problematic, and then later on I was trying to I stopped myself from going in it, and then I downloaded tour and Whoa! I was at my homeboy's house, not my house. I go on his, and That's we go probably there. for the best. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, yeah. That hit, putting on a hit. We were at his house, and we were out there just fucking around. I literally could have one of you guys killed for five thousand dollars. That's, that's come on. That's too be cheap. somebody else, please. <laughs> I mean, like whatever. But, no, so there's there's actually this really this uh. uh Who's uh, doing that for five thousand? Well, no. Bucks? So there's they a song, bro. Good. It's bad right no, but, now. So yeah. I could probably get you for times, two, man. It's a killer's market. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a sociologist the named uh, Rachel Ferguson that did um, that did a study of the dark web, and it's really fascinating how it's like there's no guarantee that you're going to get what you pay for, well, right? Yeah. Because it's like. Oh, I'm gonna. You know, who are you gonna complain to? The Better Business Bureau. I know. Bureau? I was like, like, oh yeah, I was gonna buy 500. Um, I asked for a thousand uh, grams of heroin, and yeah, I only yeah. received 800. Yeah, <laughs> and there's no like, there's no person that you can write and say, "Excuse me, my wife is very alive right now." <laughs> can, I see, can I see the manager? I was supposed to buy all these tabs of acid, and I, uh, what? You know, you gave me the wrong tracking number, but it's interesting my third eye won't open <laughs> but on the on the flip side right like the people that buy stuff have to put law enforcement and stuff like that so like yeah. the way in which trust is played out is like she was like showing it off one time like she was presenting her work it's like it's fascinating how it really plays out because it's like trust works in a place where it's like there is no recourse yeah. right yeah i wish it was like the dark yelp you know what <laughs> i mean <laughs> You know, you could get <laughs> just leave in review. Oh, this man gets two stars. <laughs> God, I already think Yelpers two shots last time. I already <laughs> think Yelpers are the worst people on the planet. So now just imagine it's it's Yelp for illegal shit. Uh, the hitman used the gun in the dog poop bag trick. Hello, that was on Law and Order season eight. <laughs> <laughs> My hitman was hacky. Yeah, yeah. Lee Harvey Oswald, lousy hitman. <laughs> <laughs> Shots. <laughs> Nothing but loose ends with this guy. Right now, it's your local forecast on the Weather Channel. The temperature is 73 degrees with light rain. Why isn't there a network yet that like makes us feel like when we watch Japanese shows? That's completely oh, have unscrupulous. You, have you ever watched? So Japanese programming is different, right? Are you talking about very the, different? So I saw are a you, guy cut his dick off. <laughs> like, you're talking about the other kind of Japanese program, <laughs> like, that because it's like extremes. Because if you yeah. ever watch NHK, what was it called Biggest Sushi Blunders or something. <laughs> <laughs> but like, have you have, like if you turn on I NHK, was just trying to prepare. Ahi and I slipped. Be careful, them Ginsu knives. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, if you watch NHK on the on the uh, broadcast antenna, the it's like ASMR the station. <laughs> it's amazing. I watched one show. The previous show was just a travel show, but half of the show was just train footage. It was followed by another show. Trains all day. About like hair. One segment was two like Muppets in lab coats talking about how toupees stick to people's heads, like toupees stick on the head technology, yeah. followed by a gentle song that was narrating the course of somebody getting their hair cut, followed by, like, this person that was like, okay, this is a person that has traditional hair in Japan, like the stuff that people do in, like, theater and whatnot, so, yeah. like, the top, bun the top knots and stuff like that, right. followed by... The Muppets come back <laughs> and they talk about the new discoveries in hair replacement. And it's just like you watch it. And it's just like, 
I feel so serene right now. <laughs> what the fuck? Because it just washes over you. Was this a kid show? No, <laughs> it was for like it was it was on before the news, and even NHK News is relaxing. Okay, all right. Relaxing yeah, yeah. TV is an important thing. Yeah, People yeah. always, you know, they go on. Oh, he gets high and he watches Caillou. Caillou high, just like this Japanese thing, is super relaxing. A lot of TV like that is real relaxing. But on the <laughs> other side, of Japan is the stuff that you're talking about—the game shows that are just like the game shows. Are the best because they do not care about human decency, they don't know morals, they don't care about your future, they just really care about you sliding down soapy stairs. And it, and it's like it's so interesting that, like, we have I don't know what practices and standards are like in Japan, but I guess, right. I guess, thought by now it would have kind of trickled over i mean the closest we ever come is like american ninja warrior or double dare or some horse shit you know yeah, I mean? like, yeah, maybe yeah. they don't have as many lawsuits they must not they must, yeah. not, they must not it, it, i mean because we don't really don't understand at media all around the world we think that's the same way I think it's our some shows though same. to be far, fair though are a lot more like they're like crazy game shows than they used to be like 20 years ago and stuff but now we got all kinds of like game shows where people have to do weird shit and stuff yeah like but that. when we look at Japanese one where you're like putting your hand in full of snakes yeah. and, <laughs> or like I remember there was one where they there was a girl in a vat of water and she's just swimming around and she's definitely afraid of amphibians and fish and they threw everything it was like seafood stew they put through frogs eels <laughs> this is like they threw like a baby octopus in there and literally <laughs> was screaming and i had no idea what she was screaming but i really felt like there was a lawsuit in there like she was like ah! and he's just excited dick all hard because like, ah! And he's sitting there. I'm like crying for this woman. He's like, she's sitting there. She's swimming to the corner. Like, please stop. Please. You don't know. She's like a biologist or something. Something like reputable. Now I care when she moved here. She, she never was. Agree now with she's going to get PTSD every time she goes yeah. to the aquarium. Yeah, yeah. Dude. A, there, was like a, there was like an article I read about one where it was like a guy that was his reality. It was almost like the Truman Show, but it was really perverse where his reality was like switched. Yeah. And he's in a small room and he lived there for like. 30 days and it was just like this weird sort of altered reality and it like he went nuts yeah and they were like so you want to do season two and he's just like why not <laughs> you know sure what the hell? yeah because he got snookered in some way into doing it and like yeah it was like a yeah would you it, ever do any of that like some kind of stanford prison experiment thing no God, no no because everybody ends up being the unabomber after that so that it doesn't end well that's that's what happened to ted kaczynski he what was, about here in your in this room how long if i gave you like let's say in terms of just just in terms of like looking at the the in terms of like your integrity and like your yeah you know, and your and looking at your sh internal strength how long do you think, given given the right resources, right, right, right? How long do you think you can stay in there? You can shower, you can yeah. poop, you can eat, yeah. But you can't leave this. You can't leave the space, right? Okay. How long? So I have, uh, and, and maybe Pat shares this with me. I have a bit of a leg up because I'm an only child, so I am incredibly good at entertaining myself. Okay, like, as you can see, by uh, I've got uh, five guitars on the walls. Yeah, I've got uh, lots of records to listen to. I've got a lot of media I can consume in here. Okay, so just but you can't have any visitors, right? I can't have any visitors, but again. I don't. I I, I, tre well, I treasure ask, my alone time. Let's ask the elephant in the room here: Is can you masturbate? Because that <laughs> oh, can kill a lot of the time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, as long as you can eat and do that. Yeah, you could probably you know get what for a long time. At the same time, even. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, you can because right. it would be like if I because if you go if you go say this is your bathroom on the right, you're gonna close the door. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Right, right. That, so yeah, let's true. assume you're jacking up, but. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, given that you could get straight up, just whack it, eat, yeah. have a, but you can't have any contact with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can have contact with yourself, right? Yeah. So you can whack yourself <laughs> off, right? You can, yeah. You can, fa you can Facebook your dick all day. You know what I mean? How long do you have to do this for? Uh, this would be the thing. When you say no contact, does no. that that includes like phone, internet, that kind of no, shit? No, yeah, it's all you. Oh, see, ugh, that, now that is, makes is it air conditioned? Yeah. yeah, no social media, no talking. Yeah, people know you're doing this. How long could you yeah, last? See, that's three days. Three days? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. You, do you think you can only last three days? Yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty crazy. I could, I go, could, for, probably I could go for last. a week or two. 
I feel Rivers could go. I, Rivers, I'm, I feel you could go straight two weeks. I'm pretty fucking weird. I, I you, could, I feel you could go <laughs> six months, bro. For, for what? I think you could go until the program stops. Do I get paid? <laughs> of course you get yeah, paid, bro. Yeah. And well, all I have to do is stay in the room and jerk off? <laughs> I mean, yeah. basically, if I, if I could leave the room, so, so, I could go years without talking to another person. <laughs> yeah, so I'm talking. So he, what you're talking about is like an isolation, like we, Unabomber extreme. situation, yes. yeah. where you're like in a. You're not going outside, but you're basically inside. In Unabomber own, went like, to the library, though. Yeah, he did. He, I mean, like, I'm talked just, to that kid. I'm going like stereotypically what people think right, of the right. universe. Right. Like house arrest or something. That would be the name of the show. Yeah, yeah, I, would, I, would, I would just call it. Now. You get a million bucks for sitting in your room jacking off. Isn't that like dream <laughs> job when you're 14? Yeah, ask a guy that's doing a 20 year stretch in prison right now. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, quite a stretch. Like, if he can jerk off all the time. Well, you got a celly. Well, though, in yeah. prison, unfortunately, you do have some contact that's, with other people. That's often I mean. violent. It's interesting when you when you hear the people that are in solitary confinement. Yeah. Like how quick people like just get broken down right, when they're right. in solitary confinement and it's like in the amount of time that is surprisingly short sometimes it's like three days where yeah. people just like but, lose it aren't they also in a small confined well, space that, without uh, windows not a comfortable room right see that that's that's what i was saying if you're talking about this room specifically where we record now i have the advantage just because i've oh, got yeah. i've got instruments i've got records i've got stuff that's not you know to, well, i need human contact i mean even it's, if it's the most basic form of human contact of just going to the store or right just like seeing that, other like, humans yeah mm. it's it's one of those things where i just uh, you know, it's not even like a social thing where it's like, oh, I got to hang out with my buddies all the time yeah. or make it's like I just being in front of other. It's just like I three days tops, probably sun up, sun down, shower, shit, shave. Yeah, yeah, three yeah. Days. yeah probably three you days. tap out. You're saying <laughs> as long as you can whack, well, you're good. Here's the thing. The isolation <laughs> wouldn't bug me, but the confined space might eventually right, get to me. Right. Occasionally, I think when I'm in a two confined space, I do start to get a little claustrophobic. Although, so I will say, so uh, Goodnight and I did a comedy festival up in the Yukon. And while we were there, many times you turned to me and were like, I want to move here. It's like living in the 19th century and I don't have to talk to very many people. Like the idea of like living, you know, in an isolated place like that did seem to appeal to you. Uh, nothing time. personal. Everybody thinks I'm a nice person and I really am, <laughs> but I hate people's guts and the less of them I have to see, the better. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so nobody but, here, of course. If we can get him to a tundra with some moose and stuff, you know, up but in you're northern the, Canada, Kasim, uh, you're the you're the you're the taskmaster here. Yeah, well, yeah. How long do you think? You yeah, can last how can you last in that situation? I've been thinking about that because as of late, I have been spending a little bit more time in my place, and I'm gonna go ahead and say this: I got a lot of things I need to get done. I feel like I could, I could go a straight month. Really? Straight month. Because like, yeah? I've had okay. so much contact with people since I've been down here. I got a few. You're turning on the whole concept of people. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> because, right, I mean, even with social media, like, I've really thought about people. I've been coming across people who, not because they're conspiracy nuts, they just understand, like, your power as an intellectual, as a creative, it gets spent online a lot. Right. And you're yeah. looking at the currency it comes with making all these great posts and everything. And everyone thinks it's going to lead to something. But. but you know what I'm saying? It it really for some people it's just an addition to it. Like there's some people like like uh I see some people who are really great. This guy I know, Yusef Roach. Really funny dude. Oh Christ, he's hilarious, yeah, he's hilarious online. Yeah. yeah, oh my god. But he quit comedy. Yeah, yeah. And so he could just put his mind in that and now he writes for Up Rocks and LA Times. All this crap. And I get it. I totally get why he can't because because it's a shame when people do quick comedy, right, start, right? But it's like if you're moving to higher heights and you know that it's gonna, especially if you're younger and you say like, hey, I w I eventually want to get out anyway and I want to be a screenwriter or I want to be a reporter or whatever, yeah, a podcaster. Yeah. Put all your energy because your body, your brain sometimes is like a cell phone battery and you have all these apps and it's running this and running this. <laughs> and I, you know what I'm saying? It's a great way to put it. You know, and you wonder like at a certain point you're like, damn, I didn't do a lot. It, I I just did this for a while now i'm down to 60 percent. like it's like no i need to keep i always want to keep it up yeah. i understand when some people say i need to put all my energy as painful it is sometimes and put it into the screenplay or this podcast yeah you know what i mean and boom well it's it's always one of those things that's interesting especially with comics where some comics will go away for a little while to write a tv show or a movie or something and like have that brain baby yeah like deliver whatever that thing is and then when they come back you're like god where have you been and it's like oh well and then Two seconds later, it's like coming soon on Comedy Central. This thing, and you're like, 
Oh, oh, so you, if you just focus. Then, Thank you. So, yeah. It's almost so easy for a lot of us to think about. I mean, a lot of us say, we, we always talk about what's holding us back, whether it be, uh, you know, deficiency like ADD yeah. or looking or your relationships or just looking at, this, or just depression. Yeah. But if we all just know that small things can be big things. If you I were mean, locked in a room, you could probably write that TV show. <laughs> if you didn't, if they said for six months they locked you with everything you need. Yeah, and yeah. you were going to walk out with 50 grand. You didn't have that screenplay written. Right, yeah. You did didn't want it you didn't want it in the first place yeah yeah that's you a know point. maybe possibly it's possible yeah yeah i guess the only thing to that i would need would be you would need some sort of access to internet just for like you know if you're researching something specific or whatever but if you could had to like stay totally off of contact from social media no here's what you do you can only access uh, uh do you remember the uh the uh, the uh Encarta? you'd have the encyclopedia <laughs> the Encarta to look up shit i remember when i got our first computer when i was a kid it had a CD-ROM with the Grolier's Encyclopedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it yeah. had the video clips, the short 15-second video clips. I would watch those things when I was like nine years old and be mesmerized. You know the one? This, this, this you, I would just look at it. It's like, yo, that Venus flytrap just a, a must that <laughs> cricket. I need to watch that again because this is so I like a computer and I can do this on demand. See, I, I like that yours is something like you know biological, something interesting. You know what I would watch over and over? The fucking oh the humanity, oh, yeah, the Hindenburg the, clip Hindenburg of the there. blimp blowing up oh, over yeah, and the, over. The Hindenburg one they're was like a, they're like oh the Hindenburg touching down here and uh, uh no, no. where was it like Lakers uh, New, New Jersey yeah New Jersey it's yeah. like here in New Jersey and he puts down the and then the blimp starts catching on fire and then the guy goes oh, oh the humanity. humanity. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, when you, I say three days, because it's like, there's times where, so when I'm not teaching, there's a point where I'm like, oh God, I'm not teaching. I could be so productive. But then there's like a point in which I just like lose my mind because I'm like, I'm not in front of people. Like, you know, my wife's around and she works at home a lot, yeah. but it's just like, I'm not interacting with people on a regular basis. And I feel like isolated and it really like messes with my mind, you know? So it's like, I think three, like given that uh, three days, yeah, three, three days, days yeah. tops. I've been, depro I've been programmed to such where it's like, I need a basic human interaction and not like a thing of like, I got to go hang out with friends all the time and be a social butterfly. It's just like, I need some contact because like, otherwise I just like get in my own head really easily. I oh. think I could go years without talking <laughs> to people. I... <laughs> <laughs> I really feel this is so funny with you. I really feel like you. I believe you with every <laughs> stitch that I am. That they call me the Omega Man. You know, remember that movie. <laughs> Wait, I always remember that cartoon character. What was it? What, why did you call movie? Man? You remember um, Charlton Heston? I am Legend. Did you see that movie? Yeah, it was a remake of the Omega Man. He was the last oh, man. On Earth. Which was a remake oh, of the I'm last man. On Earth. Earth. I'm thinking, yeah. Ome I'm thinking Mega Man. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Old Mega Man. Mega Man. He's like, wow. He was cool too. He was and like, the wow, music. he was had a really dark side. I didn't know about. Was it Flash Man or whatever? And Mega Man Two had the most bitchinest music too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. the the Omega Man was like the yeah, like the last man. But on Earth. he was the last man alive. I mean, it turned out, of course, that spoiler. But he had a dog people. in the in the Omega Man in the Charlton Heston one. He didn't. He talked to a bust of Julius Caesar that he played chess with because that was the only friend. I'm not, you remember that? Your move, Imperator. <laughs> but Great Will movie. Smith had a dog in his. He That's did. That's cheating. I agree. I could go, I could never talk to another person in my life if I had he a had dog. a dog. Yeah, yeah. That makes things so much and easier. And he eventually found a woman. So let's be honest. Well, I he think that's not... spoiler, but so did Charlton Heston in his movie. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> but both movies were better. I haven't seen the Will Smith one, but I will wager if it's like the Charlton Heston one, it was the, the part of the movie where he's by himself is better than when he finds out he's not. I had no idea it was based on that. Oh, yeah. And, and the Omega Man, actually, the Charlton Heston one wasn't even the first version. The Charlton Heston is a remake of a Vincent Price movie. Yeah. Where Vincent Price is, I think that one's called The Last Man on Earth, right? I think it is. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's all based off the I Am Legend short story. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The short story is I Am Legend, then they made The Last Man on Earth with Vincent Price, Omega Man with Charlton Heston, then I Am Legend again with Will Smith. And the Vincent Price one is very funny because, of course, it's like Will Smith and Charlton Heston are very masculine figures. And then, yeah. of course, Vincent Price is just like, ooh, I'm by myself. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> well, it starts. It's because it started more like a gothic horror thing, right? Because right. you remember in the in that one there are vampires. Again, spoiler alert. Yeah. But the Charlton Heston one, and I assume the Will Smith one, they sci-fied it up. 
a yeah. lot. So now they were like mutant survivors of like uh, apocalyptic yeah, uh, nuclear bi- fallout or something. Yeah, like what is it called? A biological warfare. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm no, no, I'm gonna watch it now because I didn't know that. It's I got had- Rosalind Cash up in it. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I swear to God, it just it's just like the phone book. The internet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like all the smart things that we know. Indian kid and spelling bee. You know what I mean? Just sitting there all in front of me. And he's coming at me. Those like a beautiful mind numbers. He's coming at me. I can and I'm spell just like, any of them Indian kids. <laughs> <laughs> put him in the spelling bee, daddy. Yeah, put me against any of them kids in a spelling bee. I, I would... can whoop them kids in a spelling bee <laughs> and in basic math probably too. Yo, you know what would be funny? If we actually went to a spelling bee here somewhere in the valley and then after a kid wins, you challenge him. Like, I like I challenge you in the parking lot to a real spelling bee. Oh, well, Vanush, you, you, know, you and me, onomatopoeia, we're spelling it right now. <laughs> Give me any word. Vanu- Wait, that's hilarious. Any word. Winner take all. Onomatopoeia, I challenge you. And the funny thing, I don't know what they no, so there's going a, there, on here. There are adult. Onomatopoeia. O M O N E M O N. A E P A E I A. Onomatopoeia. Is that right? No, that's so many letters. Wait a minute, but you don't know because you didn't. We didn't spell it out. People can call in about. That. I think I put an extra A E in there. There's adult spelling bees. Yeah, but they, they always have some weird kids. Like it's a drunk spelling bee, did, or like you. You taught right? What did yeah. you teach spelling? What did you teach? No, I thank God I never got to that point. You know what I'm saying? Because I was teaching a lot of after school programs. Oh, okay. And I was doing, and I did this emergency program, but it, I would never do, like, when I worked in schools, I had to, I would, the closest I ever came was I assisted in special ed okay. people who are listening to this. If you want, especially if it's a job, because now that you actually ask you for degrees, yeah. but now, like, with these, with these para jobs, is like, if you want to have, to be loved, to have an easy time, and you just want snacks, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But you want a little danger? Work special ed. What uh? Yeah. Really? What variety of special ed? Because Pat you? coached uh, Special Olympics for years and years too. Yeah. So, what? Uh, yeah, yeah. you were such a good dude. But it's like I had a, I had like <laughs> adults. So what I was I was doing special. Uh, I was younger than all the folks I I coached. So I was like, you know, 17 and all that. All it was like 30 year old men, 40 year old men, you yeah. know. And it was, it was just a motley looking scene, just like this little, you know, teenager being like, all right, you all, you know, this is how you throw the shot put, you know. And they would always like, there were times where I got mistaken for being an athlete, right? Especially like a Special Olympics well, athlete. Yeah. yeah. Cause, Cause it was just weird. Cause it's like, oh yeah, there's like this random kid hanging out with all the, you know, right, with all the older 30, people. Yeah. yeah. 30, 40 year old dudes. Um, that I always enjoyed doing that. I mean, it was like a really interesting group that I worked cause they were all like, they would, they would fuck with each other so bad. Yeah. There was one guy named Joe and Joe kind of looked like Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> and they would get on his ass about looking like Phil Collins. <laughs> it was so hilarious because it would be loved, the time like, like they, they would hit. It wasn't even just like a thing where they would do puns about time. the timing that they would hit him with the Phil Collins thing. Or there was like one guy named Joe that looked like Burt Reynolds. And there was just like just wait. There's the, two Joes. One's Phil and one's, one's Bert. One's Phil and one's Bert. Okay. One's Joes in the world. Really. Yeah, 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 that's fair. They're timing on each other when they would just like make fun of each other over something, or they were like breaking each other's balls. Their timing was like super solid, and just like their their personalities were just so like like there was one guy that would always like you know Ryback the big guy yeah, you yeah know? of course um, the big guy. Th- he, like before even Ryan Reeves started wrestling, there was this guy named Roger uh-huh. who uh, I coached in Special Olympics and his thing was bowling and they always would whoop my ass in bowling. That was the thing. Like I was just there to like, you know, you know, coach, but they would always whoop the ass and bowl my ass in bowling. He would wear a fringe leather biker jacket like with the the long fringe on it yeah the bon jovi special yeah and he looked like <laughs> he looked like one of the the super fans from uh the bears you know like right. he had like the mustache and the yeah, hair yeah. like the, yeah. he looked like mike he kind of like the mike ditka like <laughs> flat top and he would bowl 
And he would, he, when you get a strike, he'd be like, oh, yeah, the big guy. You know? <laughs> he would refer to himself as the big guy. And it was just like, like the personalities when you when you deal with people that are like in special ed or special Olympics are like, people always kind of think of them as being like in a certain way. But it's like, no, they have these like, they're really just dynamic in the way in which they kind of express themselves are like, is like fascinating and cool. And like, you know, just kind of the levels at which you know it's it's fun to work with with people with special needs i mean you were were you working with kids or yeah i was, work, I was yeah. working with kids like a lot of these uh skill building classes okay so it'd be kind of like yo we need to like you here's who you are the student here's his reading skills oh I, I assist teach you so i would have to work with a teacher sometimes and just doing all subjects right right but yeah. i worked in three schools that weren't thriving so i was okay so i was working at this one school where i was dating one two well in the beginning <laughs> Yeah, we work as hardcore dating. Yeah. So I had I was a parent liaison and I was also moonlighting a little bit doing like school counselor stuff, but I was also helping out in the class next door. So I had my own office. Wait, who were you dating? Like I was a, dating a teacher. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So yo, think about the situation, right? I'm getting up in the morning. I didn't want to work at this stupid school. I wanted to be doing what I wanted to do. Right. But I got to like finger blast a teacher, right? Have sex in our office. I was fucking Don Draper. I was the paraprofessional Don Draper, right? It certainly, it makes going to work better. <laughs> yo. No, seriously. People, yes. people have become so sissy. They forgot the point of Mad Men, which is work ain't so damn bad. If you're if drunk. <laughs> no, yeah. If you can drink, smoke, and fuck at the office. And had a replacement shirt. Cause that's yeah, and have that a good shirt so he smell good. About Mad Men. He always had a fresh shirt folded like the he had new shirts. Think about how poor we are. If you could have a fresh shirts out your drawer, that that I will get, I will go to bed at nine o'clock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't even drink. He had a bar and he, and he would pop open. Remember when Don Draper would come in with his undershirt and he would just sit there, put a cigarette out, and put on a fresh, fresh white yeah, yeah. spread collar. No, he had a regular collar. Yeah. Dude. That was ooh. I carry a replace I have a replacement shirt in my office, but it's because I sweat so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's not anything glamorous. I am just the sweatiest human being on the planet. <laughs> Don't make him like Don Draper anymore. They, they, he wouldn't live here present day. No, they said one of the horrible things about Mad Men is that it was it was by the accounts of people who lived through ad agencies and tried to change the culture. Right. Of it. Like there was always this, they would call it Don Draper syndrome. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Oh, so to a point, people were getting fired for trying to interrupt meetings and for do others. Like, so walking in whiskey drunk at like nine yeah. in the morning. So you're right, saying Mad is? Men messed up the ad industry because everybody <laughs> was much watching that. it. Yeah. I want to be more like Don Draper. <laughs> <laughs> It also messed up uh, haircuts. It's, it's why everybody got the weird Nazi haircuts, like in yes, two thousand seven. God damn! Uh, I thought it was I thought it was Macklemore. That was I thought everybody was just like, I want to look like Macklemore, who wanted to look like Roger Klotz from Doug. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god whoa you're whoa, this is a neck and neck this is straight up right now wow he was waiting on that too he was really perched up it was like really like a fast break threw it up bow you know what i mean but you got time you know what i mean Ooh, that might be hard to beat that was like that was a great reference. when you know whenever nickelodeon comes up it's difficult yeah <laughs> that's your sore spot right there you know, i've got some nickelodeon material but i may not bust it tonight <laughs> oh my God. I wish there was like a Jeopardy just for bullshit. Like you would be that guy that was like, and at eighty five thousand dollars, I would like, win the Lee Press on nails. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was uh, there's actually a, a there. I was watching um, there's so there's the weird networks and they had the game show network. Oh. Uh, the, but it's like the the broad, not the real game show network, the broadcast game show network, not the GSN, not GSN. This is just like. <laughs> All right, uh, the buzzer. yeah buzzard. Like the rights have lapsed on all these episodes of Pressure <laughs> Luck, so we we're gonna have a money making opportunity. They show uh, match game reruns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I was watching Supermarket. I was watching Supermarket Sweep. Oh man, that show was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was it was attached to the lead. Pro but yeah, did you the desperation. 
in their eyes in the last like 30 seconds and just like just running through getting all this food and seeing what their priorities are. I love seeing like these fat housewives from the Midwest <laughs> and just demolish aisles. You know what I mean? Go for the meat. No, man. It's going for the it's going for the 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 contact lens solution because it's small. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of that. But Pat. wouldn't it go through the little p- grates of the no, no, but no, you can get a whole a whole uh, supermarket. Oh, card. yeah. We should go as a team no, on this show. Fucking, Pat. You guys are all fucking up. There's only one answer to supermarket sweep. You fill the entire shopping cart with pistachios. Those are the most expensive fucking things for how small well, they macadamias. are. Macadamias. You can only but get five fact. of an item. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Well, you get at least five of them, and then you go uh, get, you know, some uh, lamb. Tends to be very expensive. Yeah, lamb. Uh, yeah. Meat. Yeah, go, yeah. Go for the meat. Yeah, go for the meat. There was yeah, there's but... like the worst hair of all time on that show because it's from like <laughs> 1991, so it's just Aquanet hair. There was like there was one team where it was two women with like Aquanet like mall hair, right? And they just have like the just like every piece of makeup they have like their nail polish or lipstick, just like hot pink, like it was like str- like straight out of. Just the worst of 1991 fashion wise, and their com- their competitors that were like close to them time wise was a woman with the biggest spiral perm I've ever seen, <laughs> and a dude with a mullet and a yeah. mustache <laughs> who was the most useless boyfriend ever. And like there was like the guy that was the host was just like, "So you guys looking uh, if you win the money, looking to get married?" And she's like, "Yeah, I'm hoping so." And he's just in the background like. Like shaking his head. No, no. <laughs> and they hurts, lost. Though. And they lost. So yeah. you know that they're not staying as a couple. <laughs> Yo, because he's proven seen... how much he sucks at providing on Supermarket Sweep. And he also just doesn't <laughs> want to get married on national TV. You know? Well, it stops her from, you know, getting involved with them. Supermarket Sweep really helped her out <laughs> in that respect. <laughs> that would be good if to go back. And find these people, kind of like how, like a couple weeks ago, VH1. Was that couple- where are they now for game shows? <laughs> yeah, or yeah. just embarrassing moment, like like on that, like on Wayne Brady, uh, he's hosting that game show, and there was a couple came on. Everyone assumed it probably was a couple, and then the guy was so excited, and he asked like, "What is nature relationship?" And he's just like, "And the woman's coming, we're friends," and he's just like, "Uh," and he clearly, you can see, he was in his feelings because he was he's oh. been trying to whittle away at this, right? Thing, like, right. And he's like, "No." Well, I'm single. Looks right at the camera and like, ready. No, that's not what they. I guess I. And it was just like you know they'd never talk about this. Right, right. And you yeah, just yeah. saw his 9/11 Hindenburg. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bad AIDS results. You know what I mean? Just sitting there and just like you. And he's and he's like, can we talk about this later? And she's like, no. And just like Blaine Brady's like. Yeah, and it was the best, dude. Yeah. I lo- I just love that kind of shit. It's man. awful to find out on a game show like yeah. that. Yeah, because the gifts never match. Like, hey, you, she broke your heart, but she's not going to break these eggs. You know what I mean? Is that the word? And is they give you the Fabergé? cheapest stuff on most shows. <laughs> Try to break these Fabergé eggs like it's his heart. You know what I mean? But they it's give like, you cheap stuff, though. Yeah. Not even like Fabergé eggs. You're like if you walk out of there with like the Lee Press on nails or some <laughs> shit like that. It's always cheap, the home game. It's always cheap garbage like that. Yeah. I saw I saw Lee Press on nails at... Uh, <laughs> at cvs yesterday and i was like whoa they still make these things <laughs> oh they make them i mean go to any dentist's office and look at the yeah. receptionist's yeah. hands and you dude usually- they they've gone to another level because i get really into that lady stuff they have now press on nails with the gel on them and if you get any look for any women that are watching they know what i'm talking about now that that's a whole level another level they have new shapes sizes i mean if you're just a bank teller or you're a property manager you know what i mean these are yeah. these are who buys them or you're just a sassy gay you know what i mean and you like a good nail you know what i mean you're going to pride in san francisco go really go cvs 25 bucks go greatest i, I <laughs> cost that much there's this a brand that's really high level okay you know what I'm saying? maybe jeopardy is, is i think they less take them from show dance strippers and they put them they get i still actually still. i i actually yeah i mean if they're cl- maybe I should get some press on now. We should <laughs> dope. I, I, I like a press on episode. Yeah, yeah. For the Patreon. I mean, yeah. apparently, yeah. apparently, those things are really painful to take off. I've dated so many sisters, man, and I just sit there. And when you watch a, a black woman get her braids taken out and nails taken on the same day, you understand pain comes in so many different forms. You know what I mean? It is stuck. Yeah, yeah. Liquid Velcro. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's horrible. You know what I mean? It's almost like some Guantanamo shit. Like Guantanamo shit. Like that would be like some kind of like if she knew secrets. Like yeah, if yeah. ISIS grabbed her, like, you good, you got to tell us. And, ah! 
Yeah, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah. there. <laughs> it's horrible. Kasim, where can people find you on the internet, sir? <laughs> you can find me. You can find me. Find me on KasimBentley.com. Find me on Facebook. That's where I live. Find me on Instagram. <laughs> lives on Facebook. Find me on LinkedIn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> find me on Soul Swipe. Find me on Friendster. Find me on Friends. Find me on MySpace. My st- I still get messages. <laughs> Hit me up there. If you're an inmate, I do have an account on Inmate Friends. You could do that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you can find us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash the goods pod. We're on Twitter at the goods pod. Every episode ever, youtube.com slash the goods pod. Big shout out to our friend Richard Eden up there in the Yukon doing the hard work at the goodspod.com. Pat, what should the folks do when they get to uh, iTunes? They should rate, review, subscribe, uh, tell a friend. Uh, it shows the attitude of gratitude. And if you don't have the attitude of gratitude, feck you. Song of the week this week. I have been absolutely obsessed with the Netflix documentary series Wild Wild Country. If you have not seen it, it's extremely interesting and very creepy. And the soundtrack is also really, really great. And uh, one of the artists featured in the show is Damien Hirado. And I uh, liked this song so much, I downloaded the whole record. The record is called Visions of Us on the Land. It's from 2016. And this is the song that's featured in Wild Wild Country. It's called AM AM, and we'll see you next week. Hey, stuck in a lavender beat, living in the now in between. Pages from a magazine, instruction manuals for your dreams. From the Woods was mixed, edited, and distributed by me, Rivers Langley. You can find the show on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Our theme song was composed by DJ Smiles. Check him out on Twitter at DJ Smiles. <laughs>